My name's Claire Blackburn and I am the Professor of Tissue Stem Cell Biology at the Medical Research Council Centre for Regenerative Medicine at the University of Edinburgh. My lab works on an organ called the thymus. The thymus is uh, found just under the breastbone and just above the heart. It's a vital component of the immune system because it's the place in the body where a type of immune system cell called T cells is made. T cells are the cells which we need to allow us to be able to fight off infection and control disease. If we're unlucky enough to be born without a thymus, then our immune systems can't function properly. We're really unable to control infections, um, any, any infections like bacterial infections or viral infections, and uh, this has obviously a very bad impact on our life expectancy. Um, the thymus is also the first organ to degenerate or shrink as we undergo normal healthy ageing. This means that as we, as we get older, our immune systems become better at fighting infections that we've already had, but very poor at fighting new infections. We took a type of cell called a fibroblast, which we obtained from mouse embryos. Um, this is a type of connective tissue cell. It normally has a very long, thin morphology when we grow them in the lab. And we tested what would happen if we um, forced them to express a single gene which is not normally turned on in these fibroblast cells. What we found was that once we forced the fibroblasts to express this gene, they started to change shape in the Petri dish. Instead of having their normal, long, thin morphology, they started to adopt a shape which is more typical of thymus cells. Moreover, uh, when we tested them further, it turned out that they had started to express other genes which are normally only found in the thymus and which have very key roles in allowing the thymus to support T cell development. We tested this further by asking whether these thymus, this fibroblast derived thymus cells could support T cell development in the lab and we showed that yes, they could do that. And then we went a step further and tested what would happen if we transplanted these reprogrammed cells into, uh, into a mouse. What we found was that they formed a fully functional thymus organ um, at the site of transplantation. What we imagine is that these thymus cells that we've been able to make by reprogramming of a different cell type in the lab um, could be a very readily available source of cells which could form the basis of thymus transplantation approaches. By transplanting a thymus made from these cells into patients in the future, um, we, we would hope to be able to boost immune system function in these patients. And the types of patients we hope would benefit, uh, probably in the first instance, would be bone marrow transplant patients who really need better therapies for speeding up the rate at which they rebuild their immune system following their bone marrow transplant, following receipt, receipt of their transplant. And we also think that in the future, uh, there may be benefit to elderly patients who need their immune system function to be boosted so that they're better able to respond to new infections. So far, all of our work has been done using mouse cells and obviously we have a lot of steps, further steps to go through before we'll be ready to begin to test whether this approach will be useful for patients. In particular, we really need to replicate what we've done in the mouse, in human cells, and we also need to test, once this has been done, we need to test these reprogrammed human cells in preclinical models before ever we would get close to putting them into a patient. So this work is very exciting, uh, but it's just one of the approaches that scientists are currently testing as approaches uh, for addressing this problem of needing to be able to boost thymus function in patients. And uh, I think it's fair to say that we don't yet know which one of these is going to turn out to be the best one for use in patients in the long run.